Uh, welcome back. So we're just talking about options and one of the key ones is clod roller finish. So uh, we mentioned before about what the clod roller or the P roller does about controlling what goes on in this valley. And that changes with the spiral roller and the aggressiveness of that, which we discussed. But also it's quite important what the clod roller is made out of as well. And so as you can see on here, uh, this one's an in-store machine. It's um, generally not in really extreme conditions. And we fitted stainless steel clod rollers on this one. So they have a dull polish on here. And obviously they don't go rusty, stainless steel. And the idea of the stainless steel is, uh, compared to rubber, which we also offer, is that the stainless steel is, is just slippier by its nature. So when we've got these two rollers pull in stones, clods or whatever down into the valley, the more uh, grippy that surface is, the more aggressive it's going to be. So what we found with uh, testing over the years is that rubber is without doubt the most aggressive material um, and gives us the best cleaning. All right, so horses for courses when it comes to clod rollers. Um, we'll often find that on the uh, in-store machines, we're not looking for that extreme cleaning unless your conditions are particularly bad. So uh, we have a typical situation with a customer in, uh, in the West Country of the UK, always in very sticky conditions, always really very wet. Um, and he needs the best cleaning he can get. So we'll be dealing with large clod, but very soft. And he'll be looking to chew those clods, those big clods, big clods down to smaller and smaller and extract them fully. And that won't happen in one valley. That'll probably take three or four or five or even six chews in each valley before it gets extracted. So to get a proper 100% cleaning operation, we'll go for rubber. And rubber's odd in a way. Um, it's not that the rubber's grippy pulling the clod in, it's that the soil sticks to rubber. That's what, what makes it so good. So as the soil is building up on the rubber surface, um, it becomes more aggressive still, and together with the spiral roller, that's able to chew clods through that much better than anything else. However, when the crops come in from the field and we're in an in-store situation, we've generally got less cleaning to do. We prefer to go on the safe side, and, and stainless steel gives us that. Whereas rubber is very, very good, we'll chew those big clods down. Generally when we get into the uh, in-store situation, it's finishing the job off. Small clod, some leftover horn, some stones that it's got over the harvester. And what the stainless steel is very good at, it's very, very capable of, of dealing with sensible amounts of debris, um, but it's also very good if the conditions become very dry, the potatoes are coming quite small and perhaps misshaped and perhaps soft. Um, it's a less aggressive roller. So we often see a situation where we get a mixture. So this particular machine has been specified with one rubber roller at the beginning and then the rest are stainless steel. Sometimes we'll get two and four, four and two. So you can have really what you want. Um, and you've always, always got that option. If you're finding your rubber rollers to be just that bit too aggressive, you can always run them in transfer. You know, we've, we looked at the control box. You can run each pair of rollers in whichever direction you like. The, the, the cleaning reduces massively when you put them in transfer, but you get out of jail and you can still run your stainless steel in the other direction. So there's two options that we have. We have, we have rubber, we have stainless steel, we have, in actual fact, do a mild steel version as well. Why would, we, why would we do mild steel? Is it any different to stainless steel? Yes and no, really. It, it's um, when it's been in the machine for a little while and it's polished up, um, it does a very similar job, to be quite honest. Um, but we can supply that steel very, very thick wall. So in very hard wearing situations where Things are wearing out quicker than you would want. Stainless is expensive, as you'd imagine. Mild steel is relatively cheap, very hard wearing, but it does go rusty. So soil sticks to it. It's, it's not really the perfect answer, but it's still an option that we do offer there as well. So stainless, 
mild steel on occasion and rubber are your options there. Uh, okay, so while we're chatting about options, um, another really useful one um, for a lot of manufacturers is transfer rollers. Okay, so uh, what we've got on this machine is a standard, and it comes on every machine, feed-off roller, if you like, or a transfer roller, whatever you want to call it. What that does, as the crop's passing over, uh, we have a scraper directly underneath this clod roller and more often than not we just want a little bit of um, distance to be able to feed the crop onto the next conveyor belt or screen section or whatever it may be. So we always fit this transfer on as standard um, and that works really well. So um, what else can we offer? Well we can supply multiple shafts built into the separator uh, of this type. Um, generally we don't need any more on the end but we do offer that. Most uh, people, if they're fitting our unit into a, a fixed gap and they are 100 millimetres short, 200 millimetres, four or eight inches, we offer a bolt-on transfer roller or we'll call it a pre-feed roller. So it's exactly the same as the roller you can see just here. It's a soft polyurethane, it's got a very shallow wide flight on it to help carry the crop over. And we offer multiples of these one, two or three or four uh, to be mounted on the feeding end of the separator. Um, so it's ideal if you've um, just got a gap to fill and also gives us another added bonus as well. So very typically these cleaning systems are fitted in directly after hoppers and the issue you get with a hopper, as most people know, as the crops tipped in from the trailers or whatever, and it feeds off the top of the hopper. It's generally very, very deep, and it tends to tumble and then cascade the crop over the front of the separator. Uh, the problem with that is, is that perhaps a lot of those clods have rolled straight past the first pair or second pair of rollers and not had a chance to get any cleaning. What we really want to see on these machines is the crop presented very gently directly onto the top dead center of the first spiral roller. So it lands there and then it slowly moves down into the valley and on and on and on. What we don't want is a crop spilling straight across the separator. Um, it's a waste of a good separator, quite honestly. So putting these pre-feed rollers in or transfer rollers in, what that allows uh, the grower to do or the customer is to present the crop onto these rollers instead, nice and soft, and then they slow down and then separate out and then we've got a nice single layer of crop moving slowly into that first valley. So it's um, sometimes we use these even just putting one roller in sometimes that's just enough to avoid having to put a separate presentation conveyor in. Um, you'll often see new grading lines with hoppers, another conveyor to do exactly the job we need it to do. We call it a presentation conveyor because it's presenting the crop better onto the cleaner. So just by fitting one or two of these, two's ideal, um, solves the problem. Nice and simple and very, very compact. Uh, and that's uh, the useful little thing we do there. Okay.